afternoon. And um, so it's like all the stories of this kind of uh, difficult set you want to find when you're a filmmaker. It's always because there is a human failure, because all the shipping companies that they don't like publicity, they don't want and need any cameras support. So we, we try to find, we try to make calls, etc. And everybody say no, no, no. And one day, one man uh, was the failure of this system and fell in love with us and the project and decided to help us. So that's sim simply how we found so this that man. It is a man working in a shipping company in Marseille, so that's why we shot mostly in Marseille, because the boat was attached. The ship, the freighter, I think you say in English, but I'm not sure, <laughs> was attached to the boat, the port of Marseille. And, uh, well, the, he's anonymous. I mean, <laughs> he's in the, the, the credits. But, uh, so you, you have the new name painted on the boat? Absolutely, because uh, the, the name uh, is, of course, a fiction name. I mean... It's not a fiction name, because I wouldn't have dared to um, uh, name the ship Fidelio if I didn't know another ship called, really, Fidelio. <laughs> so it came from reality, but I decided to name it like this in the script, so we named uh, our ship, which was not called Fidelio, Fidelio, after what I mean during shooting. <laughs> you said it was very long to write the script, so how long was well, it? Not, not that long, but it's... it's um, um, well, two, two people, you and Claire Bourreau? Clara, Clara, Clara Bourreau, Bourreau. yes. Right, um, the, as a matter of fact, I, I, I thought and dreamed, I, I dreamed about the movie for something like 10 years before actually writing it, because it's all inspired by um, the main character, who is inspired by uh, my best friend, who is really a sailor. <laughs> and so uh, she started to, she entered the Merchant Navy School at the same time when I came to Paris to study cinema. And uh, very early I thought I want to make a film about her. And first of all, I thought I was going to make a documentary. And then uh, I discovered fiction by making short movies and I loved it. And I thought, well, it's going to be such difficult movie to make, so let's make my first f feature on the fiction. And so we wrote um, since, uh, I think, 2010, so for a couple of years, then one more year during we were financing the project, which is not that long, but it's long enough. <laughs> and uh, Clara uh, is uh, the scriptwriter I've been working with, with on my short movies, so we know each other very well. And there's also uh, my friend, um, my friend, sorry, herself, the muse, <laughs> who uh, was a counselor for uh, script writing. And does, does she play the, the movie? Do we see her? She has a small part. She's one of the sis of the sisters. Oh. She's the one who doesn't speak much because she didn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you, we can feel that it's a movie that you had in you for a very long time because. Every every scene is uh, as perfect as it can be. I mean, you we can feel such so many, so much energy in every sequence. And there's the part when you mention Titanic, and uh, most of the time when when a filmmaker mentions James Cameron in a movie, you can feel the ambition. You know, Xavier <laughs> Dolan does it. If he says that he he's, he's aiming for being James Cameron. You know. Yes, but for me, it just came from reality, like the ship's name, because I will. Um, as a part of uh, the work before actually writing the script, I did a lot of uh, research as if I was making a documentary and especially uh, because I had um, the stories by my friends and some other stories by friends of my friends. <laughs> but then I wanted to have a, a, a larger uh, possibilities for all the different characters on the ship. And uh, I, I, I made some um, anonymous uh, questionnaires, can I say that? Pulse, I don't know, uh, to give to the sailors. And uh, among different questions, which were mostly about uh, their intimacy and things I couldn't ask you know, in front of them, there was this question of uh, what's your favorite uh, part of the ship? What do you like most to do in your job, blah, blah, blah. And one said, I like to go at the front and play Titanic. <laughs> 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 and so I decided to write this scene with literally, literally that. And you change the she you change the gen the genre. I mean, the the woman says that she is she's the Gabriel, yeah, and the man is the other. Yeah, it's just, that's very much. I mean, my friend couldn't dream to be Kate Winslet. 
Yeah. yeah, she's the suicidal I girl. Could, but uh, she couldn't. <laughs> but in the in the script, it's the same. Uh, it's uh, inverted too yeah. because the, but the I, girl I, is the poor one uh, in the in the machine. Yes, absolutely. And when uh, we first uh, showed the film uh, in Locarno, I had to, for my for the first time in my life, I had to discuss with um, English or American critics, and they were really they are really um, working hard on this. Of the, on this question of gender, not in France, it's gender, gender yeah. And uh, what I said is that maybe uh, it's uh, stronger and um, it's even stronger in Fidelio because it's not a theory. It was all inspired by a real person. So it was not like I want to make a political movie about women uh, in a world of men, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's uh, more uh, a movie about uh, men as uh, mankind, I think, and uh, humanity. <laughs> and in a woman's point of view, obviously, because I am who I am, but uh, it was not political. But of course, I was conscious of that. When we were writing the it, script, it yeah, was... Yeah, it's highly political. Yeah, of course, we, we were aware of that. Like, uh, it, it was very exciting just to, to, to think to ourselves, she's doing a man's job, she's... I don't know. But for me, it's... it's so uh, it's obvious. It's not like uh, I have something to prove about that. It's just normal. That's why it's new. That's why it's yeah. work. it works. That's because you, you're not asking questions about the novelty of it or, or whatnot. Mm. There was a movie called um, uh, Something About Rachel, I think. or It was with uh, Rachel uh, Anna Toei, mm -hmm. and it was about a wedding. And the woman was marrying a, a, a black man. Mm. And the, the point, of, uh, one of the most interesting things in the movie is that the fact that the woman was white and the man was black wasn't mentioned and wasn't a question at any point in the movie. Mm -hmm. And that's why it made it so interesting and so new, actually. Yeah. And you're doing the same thing with the gender, I think. Yeah, it's not the main subject. Yeah. It's all uh, normal. <laughs> so let's talk about And then the, you can ask questions, of course. I, I'd just like to have one little question, um, maybe technical, about the sound. Um, there, uh, that's a very complex um, environment for sound because you have all the engines and whatnot. Yes. And uh, at some point, we, we feel like you're having fun with it because she she's um, she's got a bottle of beer and she takes it near her mouth and we hear the wind in the bottle. That's it. Yeah, but it truly happens. So, yeah. I mean, during the, the of course, this scene is um, one of the scenes we shot really at sea because you can't pretend that. Uh, if you don't have, we use special effects, you can have the sea uh, in the background uh, like this blowing. So and, uh, it, and it really happened. And that's why I chose, because we have something like 10 minutes of Ariane, because she's beautiful, so I love filming her in front of the sea. But that's why I chose these 10 seconds. It's because of the So it's the, yeah, the, it's wind. the actual sound? Yeah, absolutely. And the dialogue, was it uh, re-recorded sometimes? Not, not much than any any movie, not not more than in any other movie. Sorry for my English, <laughs> uh, uh, because um, I love my sound engineer. But it's true, it was hard for her. That's she job. cried uh, every day, <laughs> and that's great job. But uh, it's it's also because there are some treasures like that, and also because sometimes it's really dirty and really I don't know heavy and too loud and it comes from real sounds and uh, but of course for her the, the whole set and the whole ship was a nightmare <laughs> everywhere <laughs> and it was very important for me that the film uh, um, soundtrack was uh, so uh, complex and hard even without music that's why there is such a uh, few music in the film because the film is uh, en français je dis le film est tellement bruyant it's so noisy that you don't need any more music. The music is already... It's conceptual music. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but of course, it, everything is not um, like this moment. is not uh, happening. This is like a miracle. You have this all the time, but it's not happening all the time. And uh, the sound is very... Uh, we, we worked a lot on sound uh, editing and sound mixing. And one more time, my friend, the sailor, <laughs> was there and just checked that it was uh, realistic and she even uh, came to re-record some sounds in her engine room because she's still working with a little uh, <coughs> recorder which are mixed in the film because she thought what, what we had done was not 
the way she feels when she's uh, uh, turning on the, the engine. Engine, <laughs> sorry, engine. So yeah, it, it was also a very, uh, uh, we, we also worked a lot on that, sorry. Well, it shows. And uh, the, the pieces are very realistic too. You're very close and you feel the skin of the people. You're very, very close to the people when they are kissing. As that kisses, was the kisses are cool. Yeah. This, uh, because I love kissing. <laughs> I think. It shows too. Yeah. So, questions? Anyone? <coughs> How long time did you spend on the, on the boat? Uh, we spent uh, something like four weeks, that is to say uh, most of the shooting, to, uh, to more than four weeks, and six days of navigation, uh, six days of really sailing uh, at sea. And we started with that, which uh, was a choice too, uh, because um, uh, of course I, I didn't want to, to shoot everything at sea to have been madness and stupid and I don't like uh, uh, make people uh, suffer so <laughs> I didn't want to do that but I thought that starting with the real shooting at sea was great for everyone because everybody was afraid of that include, including me and I think it's very good to always start with what is the most frightening because after that you're very strong <laughs> And uh, of course, it was our um, our main source for every every <coughs> other part of the shooting, because all the actors had experienced something in their bodies that they could use again. They they, they had watched how the um, sailors were working every day and having uh, meals and talking together, so they could use that too. Uh, and also for the technical crew, something very stupid, but the um, prop master. Uh, could have seen what was moving when it's uh, sailing, and sometimes it's very small, but there was always something like a curtain or uh, I don't know something shaking in the engine room, and uh, that was really really yeah useful so for so everyone. So when you did it again in a, in a studio, can you it was not in studio, it was in the same ship, but it was on the port. Yeah. Okay, right. we did nothing in the studio. It's it's all in the same ship. But, uh, ah yeah, because I didn't tell you about the story of the ship. <laughs> when, we, when we had this agreement from, from the company, uh, it was for that particular ship, which was perfect. It's like when you find the perfect actor, because he was, sorry, she was, you say in English, uh, old enough, like 20 years, 25 years. And uh, also, uh, she had a, a planning uh, uh, that was good for us, because she had three weeks of technical stop at port so that that was um, that was the date that uh, um, were for um, uh, determine that made us choose the dates for all the shooting it's always the same with the main actor <laughs> it gives the dates for everybody and uh, so in our case it was the ship and uh, so we had uh, we used his last uh, voyage to shoot at sea and then we had three weeks on port and pretending we were at sea, which is really easy when it's, for example, night in a cabin and uh, sometimes in the, engine room, in the engine room, but we also had shot some stuff in the engine room working because everybody had to experience that for real. For example, when Ariane is crying in the engine uh, after... She puts her forehead on uh, Yeah, like that, it's really working and uh, it's such... Uh, violent set that is very good, I think, for her acting. And um, yeah, just to say that it was really important to have uh, started the shooting with that uh, moment of uh, real sailing. Yeah. And so you had the prop master shaking the curtains? Yeah, like, yeah during the <laughs> sex scenes, <laughs> you had the prop master somewhere, you know, in, yeah, shaking Ly lying through the bed, <laughs> but just checking, moving. But he didn't watch because he was very shy. He didn't watch the actors. He was just, you know, like this, looking at the curtain, looking at the ceiling. That was really cute. No, not for every sex scene, because I knew I, I knew that it's very difficult to shoot it for the actors. So I was I tried to be really. Uh, dedicate so to is them. That, is there going to be a making of, a documentary about the making of the movie? <laughs> no. Or the DVD? No. The, the, no. <laughs> <laughs> we could use that actually. <laughs> yeah. So, someone has a, another question maybe? Yeah. Is there a reason why the voice actors are Norwegian? 
Well, the boyfriend is Norwegian because Anders is Norwegian. Okay. Uh, but as a matter of fact, he, the, the character was written for, well, a Frenchman, I mean, any Frenchman. And uh, it, as a contrary for many of the parts, it was a very long um, casting for me to find Felix. And uh, I'm really so happy with Anders Danielson Lee. And uh, bec because um, I wanted someone like in the Chekhov's, um, che Chekhov, Chekhov. The Russian writer? Yeah. Chekhov. When you can see that uh, he has talent, he's very talented, intelligent, but without doing anything special, just because of his uh, presence. Mm. And and what, uh, what's the, sorry, what's the link with Chekhov? C'est dans uh, Oncle Vania. Ah, it's, it's a line about a character in Being Oncle special Vania. without doing anything. So. Yeah, it, about uh, a man who is talented. Okay. In French, I know it's, il a du talent, but in English I'm not sure, and in Russian I don't know. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it, but it was really hard to find. It's not that um, French actors look uh, looks stupid, not at all, but <laughs> it's, it's because a lot of French actors, when they are sexy and intelligent, they are very Parisian. Yeah, from Paris. Mm -hmm. what I mean? I'm not Parisian, I wouldn't and know. <laughs> <laughs> they are from Paris and they, are, um, they can be seen like, well, what, what she's doing with that kind of man, like hipster from Paris as she has beautiful sailors all around her. It's stupid. <laughs> and uh, I think that uh, Anders' presence is, um, is telling something um, of the character without any words because he's a stranger and he has this accent in French, in French which is so sexy <laughs> and uh, which is also telling the story of a man who uh, ran away from his country because he wants to make art and he thought in France it would be more interesting which can be true with uh, comics what he's doing with drawing and uh, well, that, and, and among everything, uh, for me, Anders is one of the best uh, actors I've ever actually met. <laughs> and uh, is he a professional actor. But, but, but it, it, I, I, you know. probably know his story that he's a doctor. I mean, a, a, a general. Yeah, a general in the real life, he's a doctor. In real life, okay. but now I think also an actor, because he has done all the films since Fidelio. But when I met him, that's what he told me, like, I'm not an actor, I'm a doctor. And he was like, but you're the most incredible actor I've ever seen, <laughs> and I've ever met in my life, so come on. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I think what is really strong about um, his interpretation is also that you can feel at any time that he's absolutely in love with her, without doing anything and without saying, I love you, blah, blah, blah. It's, you can see it, you can feel it. And it was really um, tricky to cast this uh, part because as you can see in the movie, you see the character for two minutes at the beginning, then you see him on Skype uh, like uh, 20 minutes later and it's only after one hour of the movie that he can have real scenes to... to deploy in yeah. To spread to, his wings. Yeah to, ex yeah, to spread his wings. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, and so, I really needed someone that you can uh, remember, and someone who was also um, good enough to be uh, as, I mean, as good as uh, Melville Poupeau, which was for me also very sexy. The man who is playing the captain, and uh, I think that. They really match together because they are also very different. They are, they, are, they, they are not really opposite, but they are different. She couldn't find the, the what she finds in Melville in uh, Anders, and, blah, blah, blah. and I think that was uh, really close to what I wanted to tell about Ariane uh, Alice's story. Sorry. <laughs> And it's also interesting because of the, um, this twitching of gender that you do in the movie, because most of the time the Norwegians are the sailors, are the people of yeah. sailors and whatnot. Yeah. And <laughs> here it's the other way around. So yeah. He's the one that stays on, the, on, the, on land. Absolutely, and when we speak about gender, and sometimes I have this question about the Homer's Odyssey. Homer's Odyssey. I mean, the Odyssey. With, with the uh, Odyssey. Odysseus. 
Awesome. Odysseus, well, I mean, what I put in the title, like Alice's Odyssey is a joke, of course, but it's also uh, because I, I think uh, Odyssey is the first uh, story about sailors. And it's also about uh, love and fidelity and commitment. And I think that the most relevant uh, reference to Odyssey is the character of Felix. He's like, really for me, he's like a Penelope. He's a character who is waiting with the love, and he's not doing tapestry, but he's drawing, which is quite the same to me. <laughs> and uh, yes, sorry, I didn't know what I want to say. But that was <laughs> perfectly perfect. All right. Maybe you, one last question. All right. Will you, uh, which, yes, the young woman at the second row, who seems to be the organizer of this. <laughs> <laughs> Just like in uh, La Grève des Vents, that was yeah. right. Nice work. Yeah, yeah. Work, works. Just like in uh, La Grève des Vents, uh, I think your movie is um, like is interested in documentary as well. It's like documentary on the go. Uh, can you speak a bit about this? Uh, yes, because um, in Fidelio, as I told you, the, f the first process of uh, uh, I don't know, not creating but writing and thinking about the movie was uh, in a very documentary mood and it's, I think every single detail comes from reality in Fidelio. What I didn't tell you uh, is also that I, I made a trip myself as a passenger to write the first draft of the script because uh, after I had uh, collected so many stories, so my friend told me, well, now you have to do it. <laughs> You have to feel it. And I think that's why I wanted really to shot on a real ship, because I had experienced it. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's very close to a documentary, this kind of gathering material. But um, what I learned from La Grève des Ventes was, for example, to organize uh, an organized mess of uh, scenes with groups of people, people who are actors, people who are um, less experienced actors or non-actors, but for me they became actors as they're in the movie, everybody's actor. So you, you had real sailors uh, extras? Not really, I mean the, all the Filipino people, they are non-actors, and among them there is one real sailor, which is not hard to find, it's the one who's uh, wearing glasses, the old man who's so great. <laughs> and for example, uh, for him, I didn't have to do anything special like you have to do this and be like this like uh, when you're talking to an actor because he's a man who is uh, uh, retired and he was so happy to come back on a ship and have uh, his role again to put uh, clothes and to do the gestures and he could feel that he was even better than the real actors and he loved it and so uh, I had nothing to do but shoot you know and for example, when he's, when he's smoking, he, I think it's even a stolen shot. He was just smoking during a break. And um, he didn't shooting. know you were shooting? No. <laughs> so it's uh, stuff like that. And sometimes uh, I thought that was going to be very nice to put some uh, improvisation in the, for group scene, and it was dull and irrelevant, so we just kept the light. And sometimes my actors offered me some great lines like the uh, Chinese dragon, <laughs> which I didn't write myself. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, I think it's always good to keep a, an open mind uh, as far as you can do because we had not a lot of money, so not a lot of time. And uh, I think yes, uh, but you know, I, I um, during my studies, I, I, I had the chance to work with um, Claire Simon, which is a great documentarist was my teacher and I, I think that really helped me because I always have this in mind that you can use uh, the reality, le réel quoi. <laughs> That's it. Right. Well we could keep listening to you for hours and things, but we have to stop right now. So thank you very much and great work. Thank you very much. to congratulate Lucy on uh, winning I the great prize in a Budapest Titanic film Titanic festival. festival. <laughs> she just won it uh, it's like a few hours. right now, yeah. so I'm not there. So, <laughs>